Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Channel 781 News Waltham City Council debrief. Uh, this week in the City Council, um, there was a resolution having to do with buses and extending the asking the MBTA to extend the 73 bus line in Belmont so that it goes through Waltham. Um, there was supposed to be a hearing for um, Thrive uh, Cannabis Shop, but that was rescheduled. Um, there was the mayor asked the city council to approve the taking of some land near the new high school site. Um, so we'll talk about that. We'll talk about all of those. I'm here with James Crickelly. everyone. And Chris Gamble. Hello, everyone. And our special guest this week to give us some background on two of those issues is Christine Mackin. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having me back. Thanks for being here, Christine. Uh, so one more thing I want to mention this week, City Council, there was also a hearing um, about uh, Verizon is asking permission to um, do some work on Bank Street to install new conduits. And that was approved without being sent to a committee. So uh, we are not going to discuss that in detail, but I want to mention it for anyone who lives in that area. You can um, look, for, look, look out for that. So Councillor Darcy, uh, submitted a resolution calling for um, the city of Waltham to petition the MBTA, ideally uh, with help from some other cities, um, to extend a bus route that currently ends at Waverly Square in Belmont and to have it go down Trapello Road into Waltham. So I'm going to try to change, share my screen here. So here's a MBTA map of Waltham. It's a little bit hard to see. Uh, so what I did was I just made like a simplified version where I traced the bus routes. So you can see the bus routes here approximately and the purple um, circles are the train stations. And you can see that almost all of Waltham's um, transit is in uh, the southern half of the city with the exception of the 61 bus, um, which is what used to be called the 70A that goes up to North Waltham. But there's a big chunk of the city that's not covered. And if you live in North Waltham, this is not a great commute because you have to go all the way into uh, Waltham Center before you can go into town. Um, so what Councillor Darcy wants to do is there's a bus route called the 73 that starts at Harvard Square and uh, currently ends in Waverly train station in Belmont. And he wants to extend it up Trapello Road in Waltham so it would connect with the 61. And so if you look at it this way, it actually seems like a really great idea in terms of covering a big chunk of Waltham um, that's not covered. Um, so before we go into talking more about his resolution, uh, I wanted to talk to Christine a little to get some background on transit in Waltham, because this is, well, this seems like a really great idea to me. I have a feeling James and Chris will agree, but this is a um, counselor who is asking the city uh, to petition the MBTA. So is that a realistic way to go about doing this? So can you give us some background on that, Christine? Sure. So the relationship between the MBTA and all of the municipalities in Massachusetts is um, a little bit unfortunate in terms of trying to do things like this, because usually what happens is the MBTA wants the municipality to demonstrate that there will be sufficient ridership to sustain the buses. Um, I think probably all four of us share the opinion that public transit is a public good and we should just pay for it. But what the MBTA wants to see is enough ridership to make it worth their time. So the success stories in other communities have looked like those communities either running a pilot program out of their own funds to provide transit or putting money into infrastructure to encourage the ridership. Um, at one of the Mass Municipal Association meetings I attended, there was a really exciting presentation I do not remember if it was Everett or Malden, but one of the municipalities a little closer to Boston made a dedicated bus lane and saw a 200% increase in ridership. And as a consequence, the MBTA doubled the frequency of the buses along that route. So it is something where if the city puts in an effort and ha has both the need for it and the ridership to sustain it, the MBTA will act. Um, Asking the MBTA to run their own pilot like this is a little bit more difficult because 
we don't have any data numbers or demonstration of need right now. Now that's something that Councillor Darcy could possibly approach with this resolution um, to try to do a community input survey or a public hearing or do some kind of traffic calculations to try to show the need for this ridership. Um, but that's a little bit more of the lift and it means there's likely to be a greater delay between this resolution coming and actually implementing extension of this bus line. Um, however, we have had some transit success stories in Waltham in the past. Um, and one of those actually was us building new infrastructure or with the having the intention to build new infrastructure. Um, last year or possibly two years ago, councilors Lakava and Paz brought forward a resolution to update some of the bus shelters along Moody Street, which is an important travel corridor in Waltham. And um, the city has made a financial commitment to build those shelters. I don't know what the construction schedule is, but there is money appropriated. And then I know the 70A as I, it is in, stuck in my head, even though the numbers changed. Um, often on the MBTA has talked about canceling that and the council has fought back and said, no, we really need this. Our people really need this. Please keep it in place. Um, when I was a graduate student, I participated in a public hearing about changing the scheduling for the commuter rails, um, where once again, there was a big public outcry and the city pushed back and said, no, we really need this. And the MBTA did not cut the service. So it's a place where the municipality does have a little bit of leverage, but the MBTA likes to see a little bit of input from the city in order to make these things happen. Interesting, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Chris, did you have any other uh, background um, on this resolution or Councillor Darcy's um, resolutions having to do with buses in the past? Um, yeah, so George has done this before. I think actually he's done this exact same resolution before, in fact. Um, and you all just have to take that at my word. Um, but, you know, hopefully he's learned his lesson. The therefore be it resolved is a little vague. And as we've discussed in the past, you usually want a little more concrete um, action steps, uh, where in this one, it's just simply the city petitions. Um, but in his uh, speech about it, where he was very impassioned and talking about the needs of uh, North Waltham residents for public transit. And um, in it, he talks a little bit, some of those action steps, uh, and he calls on the representatives, uh, state representatives, which is kind of funny because Tom Stanley, our representative is also our city council. So he's sitting right there as he names him uh, personally um, to petition the MBTA or to actually he said officially endorse, which is more, which has more teeth. Um, and then also the to petition the city of Belmont and Lincoln to officially endorse this as well. Um, so hopefully he's learned some lessons about how the MBTA um, feels pressure and hopefully uh, this, uh, you know, hopefully this moves forward. Thanks. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned he did very, give a really nice speech, a very passionate speech about all the, um, you know, the good that this bus line would do and all the reasons it makes sense. And actually, I wanted that that leads me that makes me think of a follow up question for Christine, which is he gave a list. He actually listed in the resolution all the bus stops. And he, in his speech, he talked about all the places that it goes to, which include the National Archives, it includes the Fernald, if whatever we end up doing with the Fernald, and businesses and homes. Uh, is that the is that kind of thing convincing? Or are you saying that maybe uh, we need quantitative data, like um, how many people would actually be on those buses in order to convince the MBTA? I think quantitative data is more the way to go um, because transit, my opinion is that the destinations in Waltham are not going to be drawing people from the city outward. It's more about getting people from Waltham inward. Um, and we don't really know how many people are going to do that until we either start running a bus or do some kind of public survey to find out like what level of interest there actually is. Um, if we do go forward with some of the development plans of the Fernald, I could see it becoming a destination in the future, um, but the MBTA is not going to be interested in something that might happen to five, 10 years down the line. They're interested in what's the ridership going to look like in the next six months right after we put this into place. 
Thank you. And jumping, jumping on uh, something, connecting two things that Christine talked about, uh, how the need to show ridership would increase before the MBTA would do anything. If this is exactly what they said they would need uh, for the bus shelters um, last year. And the MBTA said, we're not going to give you any money because uh, we don't think, you know, this is really our priority. We don't think this is going to increase ridership. And so the city of Waltham, uh, to its credit, um, decided to foot the bill. Usually it's the MBTA paying for these things, but we, we took taxpayer money and uh, created these or plan to create these bus shelters. Uh, so that's a point that should be made uh, as well. And if I can go ahead, James. I was going to say it would be nice to see this uh, also end up in like uh, the city funding more pilot programs in general beyond just bus shelters, but covering more of the areas that both we're planning on developing or tying it in some way to the city master plan that they're supposed, that they're mm -hmm. supposed to be putting together. Yeah. Um, three years ago, pre-COVID, Councillor Lacava and I participated on the committee for a big survey that Waltham Partnership for Youth did actually looking at transit needs mostly in the north-south corridor up and down Lexington Street because they're focused on a youth population so they were looking at getting kids to the high school and the YMCA. Other municipalities in Massachusetts including our next door neighbor Lexington actually pay out of their city budget to run a shuttle service. Um, in Lexington I think there's three routes that do various little loops around it that connect further flung parts of the city to the existing MBTA routes. And I actually think that that would be a really great use of city money to run a pilot along that corridor and document what our ridership looks like at whatever rate we choose to set it, the, the price, the ticket price. Um, and that way we can go back to the MBTA and say, look, we have captured some data on the level of interest in this route. Um, the city did do a pilot program for transit at least a decade, maybe more ago. And the last time it got brought up in front of the city council, Councilor McMiniman was very against spending any additional city money to do another pilot program um, because apparently the transit needs of Waltham have not changed over her 44 years in public service. And the community is exactly the same as it was the last time we did this. And so there's no need to pay to do a pilot program. Um, I strongly disagree with that opinion. And I think this would be a great use of a couple $10,000. Um, Lexington's shuttle bus does not cost that much out of the city budget. And running a pilot program for six months or a year, to me, seems like a really reasonable use of some of the money the city has to serve the residents of Waltham. Even like setting up a free route or like uh, you, you setting up uh, uh, like a free route and using it to document like what like to, to alleviate like traffic and peak hours for mm -hmm. common things would be like considering how much of an issue traffic can be around the city like that seems like something that should be taken much more seriously by counselors hopefully it happens i agree i hope so too i think uh uh we should also know john mclaughlin the ward four city councilor had a great line about how waltham always complains about traffic and he said, which often is not a very Walthamite thing to say, is that public transit reduces traffic. And so uh, I was like, wow, I wasn't expecting John McLaughlin to say that. Uh, so thank you. So last week when we reported on the committee meetings, uh, we missed the Rules and Ordinances Committee. So I watched that video since then and there wasn't, um, we had seen that Uma Flower was on the agenda, but there wasn't anything to report. They tabled that uh, pending the traffic study. So there's nothing new there. And then at this week's city council meeting, um, there was supposed to be a public hearing for Thrive, which is another proposed cannabis business, and it was postponed to April 11th. Uh, they didn't say why, except it was the applicant requested it. Um, and so there's nothing new to report, except since we have uh, Christine here, we thought we would she could help us clarify something, which is we found out in a prior meeting that the traffic study that all these uh, cannabis dispensary permits are waiting on is being paid for out of a traffic fund in the city budget um, that was paid into by someone else who did a project. So that suggests that maybe this traffic uh, study will then be used to uh, help determine 
determine whether these businesses have to pay into that fund. Um, so since we came up with that hypothesis, we've been looking for someone who could tell us if it's uh, real, true or realistic or not. So Christine, what do you have to say on that? So the, the money that the city is talking about for this study comes out of a, a pot and I'm going to get the name of it wrong. It's like the transit or the transportation infrastructure improvement fund or the transportation infrastructure and safety improvement fund. There's some acronym for it that has escaped my mind. Um, and money goes into that fund when the city issues a special permit for construction that we have determined is going to negatively impact the traffic flow in that area. So when somebody, for example, on Third Ave or on Winter Street comes in and says, I want to build a giant office and it's going to draw 1000 cars per day. Um, often as part of the special permit negotiation with the city council, they can either pay for the direct improvements to the infrastructure in that vicinity, which is how we got that Third Ave um, intersection improvement the last couple of years, or they can put a chunk of money into the infrastructure improvement fund. Um, and then that money is controlled by the city. So it's up to the city to spend that money back out for projects that we think are worthwhile. Um, however, there is a limitation on what projects that money can be spent on. Several years ago, um, the council was asking if we could open up that pot of money and use it anywhere else in the city. And so this was before I sat on the council, but I, I'm familiar with some of the fallout from it. Um, the law department provided an opinion to the council saying that there are restrictions on how far away you can go from the locus that the special permit was issued for. So if the special permit is on Winter Street, you have to be within a certain region of Winter Street in order to spend that money back out of the pot. So paying for this Uma Flowers study out of that traffic infrastructure fund is a little bit interesting because they haven't specified who put that money in in the first place and what projects it was associated with. My assumption is that <clears throat> somebody in the law department reviewed it and said, this is an acceptable use of money. Um, but there has not been sufficient transparency around that interaction. In your opinion, is it possible to fairly quantify the traffic problems a business causes and then use that money to make to mitigate it in a way that makes sense? Or is this more like your indulgences, like you're paying <laughs> to you're paying to wash away your sin of, of being oh. bad for traffic? So the money is linked to a formula, I believe, that is related to the floor area ratio of the project, which is related to the number of parking spaces the project can get. And it is related to the um, traffic studies that are provided as part of these special permits. So there is a formula that spits out what the number ought to be. Um, but if the city is not spending that money to actually improve the traffic, then it does look a lot more like an indulgence than it does look like a practical solution to traffic problems. So if it's all one big pot and it's coming from different locations, how are you supposed to track that at all? That seems like it's yeah, potentially very difficult to keep track of. I believe the city auditor's office maintains the list of which money is associated with which project. Um, my personal opinion is that once the money has sat around for enough time, like some of the buildings have changed owners, some of the projects have been rebuilt since the money came in, like we're not gonna give it back, so we should just spend it on something else. Um, but between the city auditor and the law department and the traffic engineering team, they know which amount of money is associated with address, with which address and with which special permit. So they have 
kept track of that over the years. So the idea that they need this study in order to do a formula to determine how much they're going to ask the businesses to pay in, that does make sense according to what you're saying. Am I, am I right? Yes. The unusual okay. part is that the city's paying for it. Uh, a more conventional route would have been for one of the petitioners to pay for the study as part of their application. Um, and if I can offer my opinion, I think that this is a bit of a delaying tactic on issuing any of those special permits. I think there's likely to be a big power struggle between the city council and the mayor's office on issuing any of these permits. Um, because she controls the host community agreement and the city council controls the permit. Uh, and she does not want to issue any host community agreements, but the council, according to the way the city voted in 2016 and state law is obligated at some point to issue those permits. So this whole traffic argument is just a way of kicking the can down the road. And the other thing that absolutely drives me up the wall is that every counselor, well, some counselors are making a big fuss about having four or five permits all on Bear Hill Road and coming up with cutesy nicknames for how many pot shops we're going to have in that area. But the reason that all of these shops are applying for permits on the same portion of land is because Waltham has constructed the most restrictive possible zoning for where pot shops can be located. And if the city council was serious about spreading the impact out across the city, they ought to revisit the zoning on where these pot shops can be located to loosen it up and try to find some other compromise locations in Waltham to put these businesses because the voters of Waltham express that we want them. And it, it, the problem is not the traffic, the problem is the zoning, which the council is responsible for. That's, that's a really good point. Yeah, the council required them all to be in a very narrow area. And now that's the problem is that they're all in the narrow area. So. I'm sorry, I just want to follow up. When you say that the mayor doesn't want to issue any host agreements, is that based on something she said publicly or that's your impression based on her behavior or why do you say that? That's my impression based on her behavior. Um, I don't think she's ever made an on the record statement about not wanting to issue host community agreements. But if you hang out around city hall when these things are being discussed, you can hear her loudly shouting at other members of the city council or people walking by in the hall about how she hates marijuana and she doesn't ever want to issue a host community agreement and won't somebody think of the children. Thank you. That provided a lot of insight. <laughs> that provided a lot of insight into the cannabis issue in Waltham. <laughs> thank you. James or Chris, any comments or questions? Yeah, thank you. I was going to say, this also following the talk about the bus routes, right? Where businesses are located matters and having them on transit matters, especially for things like this. It's mm -hmm. just, it's, this is like not one problem you can attack it in, in like traffic is like an abstract thing to just, you know, fix by like spending money on it or whatever. It's you have to approach it like, like you know, strategically and like by changing the built environment to remove the need for traffic in the first place in a lot of ways. Thank you, Christine. We have one more thing to discuss. So you're welcome to hang out or uh, take off. Thank you a lot for being here. Yeah, thank you for having me back on. It's a pleasure to talk about these things every once in a few months and not every single Monday. So uh -huh. thank you for giving me an outlet. So there's only one more thing we need to talk about and that is uh, taking of some land. So we saw on the agenda that the mayor um, was asking the city of council to approve the taking of a piece of land on Bomb Street, which is near the new high school site. And it was a short part of the meeting. It was referred to the committee of the whole, uh, but we thought it was interesting. Uh, and Chris, do you have some more background on this for us? Yeah, so we saw on the agenda friendly taking of uh, some land. There's three things that actually correspond with this piece of land. And it's the, um, the taking of the land, the approving of the money for the land, and then the, um, the transferring of the care and custody and control to the school department. Um, and so I didn't think I knew what it was, but then after you know some quick Googling, because uh, it seemed interesting, 
I realized I knew exactly what this was. Um, this is Charlie's Farmland. Um, you might remember this being discussed uh, if you follow the Waltham channel on Facebook. Um, I, I don't want to mispronounce this guy's last name, um, but uh, Charlie, he's taken a lot of land and as a retirement thing, he's like, he's over 70 years old. As a retirement thing, he's turned it into a working farm and he donates 100% of the produce um, to Waltham things. Um, I know him because he donates to Healthy Waltham. And I also have a friend that works on his farm. Hi, Anime. Uh, shout out to Anime. Um, and uh, so I reached out to Charlie um, to ask him a little bit about this because a friendly taking can mean a lot of things. And to be clear, a taking means that the city takes your land without asking it's essentially an eminent domain but this is a friendly taking which can mean a lot of things and a friendly taking can sometimes not mean friendly um and so i wanted to be i wanted to get him on the record um because it sounds like a cool thing he wants to permanently de-restrict and this is what it says in the in the docket uh permanently de-restrict the land for educational purposes so it can never be developed by the city and uh and with the hopes that there is some kind of interaction with the new high school and this farmland. And also just for the record, so I can put it out there into the world, it might come back later, is that Charlie still hopes to um, farm the land himself. Um, so I'm hoping the, that is true as well. Um, but this is great. I mean, he had it for two years. He donated all his produce for two years. Um, but I mean, to see the land go towards this is great. I would love if this was like some kind of class with the, new high school, some kind of farming class. What I what I hope it's not is that this is a ruse to try and get another street into the uh, new high school uh, because that has been brought up that uh, we need more land to do that. You saw that when the Jericho Hill was taken. Um, and so I'm hoping that this is, these are good intentions. And I mean, it's also $4 million, um, which is not nothing. Um, so that is the background that I know about this. Thank you. Did you have anything to add, James? Not a lot to add, but I definitely hope it continues to get used for farming. I think that would be an excellent addition to whatever like the students are doing there. Yeah, having a working farm can be really great for a school. And actually the private school in Waltham, Gann Academy has their own farm and they post pictures of it online. It looks, it looks really cool. So that would be great. I hope that is what it's used for. For those of our viewers who don't know, the land for the new high school was taken by eminent domain and that was extremely controversial and it still is along with other stuff uh, related to the high school. So when we saw, this on the agenda, it seemed like this might be uh, something very controversial, but it's actually really cool, good news if it is what we think it is, which is a farm for the school. Um, so that's everything we have uh, to discuss. Thank you very much, James. Thank you very much, Chris. Bye, everyone. We'll see you next week with the city council committee meetings. <laughs>